So in our first video, we took a look at phishing and what a typical phishing email might look like. If you haven't watched that one, hit pause right now and go check it out. I'll wait on you. Good. Now then, it's time to take a look at some other ways that phishing commonly presents itself. You may already be familiar with old school email scams. They occur when someone tells you that you've won a cruise or a lottery you never purchased a ticket for. Lucky you, right? Many times the origins of these emails are questionable right off the bat due to poor grammar and strange sentence structure. Most organizations have editors to check for that kind of thing. However, people may overlook spelling and grammar issues when the sender claims to be from another country or adds a sense of urgency to the correspondence. You might see language like, hurry before your account is shut down, or this opportunity won't last. Then there's spear phishing. Spear phishing is often perpetrated through emails too, but the communication is designed to fool a specific person. An email might have a subject line applicable to your line of work, and it might even be addressed to you directly. It may even appear to come from an individual that works for your organization. Tricky, tricky. We're not saying not to trust Paula and Dave in accounting, but a healthy sense of skepticism regarding these types of things goes a very long way. For these ploys to work, typically a victim of phishing will have to click on a website link or open an infected attachment. So with that said, it's important to remember all the ways that we may receive a website link or an attachment. Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, even your text messages aren't necessarily safe. You might even receive a phishing phone call where the person on the other end urges you to visit a website and enter your information or sign up for a service. All of these should be red flags. These examples where a victim or a small group of victims are specifically targeted take a lot more work on a cyber criminal's part, but the payoff can be much bigger. To find out how to protect yourself and your organization, make sure and check out the third video in this series where we'll discuss practical prevention tips and TML risk pool coverages. 